Oh my gosh. I don't know what the deal is. Okay. June 3rd, 2016, Small Business Accounting Advisor. Hello, everyone. <laughs> I feel, like, I feel like it's Groundhog Day. <laughs> I think so. <laughs> I think I got my technical issues under control. Maybe. Uh, so how is everybody today? I think everybody's better than you today, um, Gina. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> because I'll blame it on that. You blame it on you. Blame it on the heat. Okay. <laughs> So would anybody um, like to start? Can we start with anyone in particular? Linda, you had some things. Deb, our celebrity. Hi, Deb. Yes. Birthday late. <laughs> and Jan's coming on. Larry's back with us. Mm -hmm. Jan, do we have sound? Uh-oh, we're still not hearing you. Ah, oh, sorry about that. Just try unplugging your earphones. Or look at the mic down in the lower left with the up arrow. Maybe try changing your mic. Yeah, I try. Can you hear me? Yay. Yeah, I can hear you now. We got you. Good. Just turn up the volume. Okay. Hi. So, Linda, let's start with you. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm uh, still working on that client that we bought from Quick into QuickBooks, and we're pulling in Oak Street accounting numbers and that. And I have, I'm making binders like this for them now. For fiscal year, we did 13, and now we got, we're working on 14 and then 15, and it's going to have all the reports in there, their, their Excel reports, which file plus all the QuickBooks reports and we're writing a policies and procedures manual so that they can they're trying to come up with an extra strategy for three partners that is not going to leave their current president making the nosedive right and mostly it's the partners and their wives and their sister working in the business there's there's uh, three three people, three staff people, other than that in the office. The rest of the people in the warehouse, they'll stay. That's not a problem. But one of the things is when you have a business, you have to always be coming up with new products because the products you're currently selling tend to drop off after a while. And, and the public wants new products. And they've done some. They do... Uh, they did a salad bowl that has ice under it and then, then the place for the salad and that, that sold well for a while, but that's probably 10 years old. And they have party wear, nice glasses. And, uh, they came up with a fruit infuser thing where you have a pitcher, but then there's fruit that goes in the middle and it gets put down the middle. Right, right, right. Nice kind of thing. So they're, they're just really trying to come up with a good exit strategy and this is all part of it and I was discussing it with the chairman of the board is who is the man I'm working with and we're going to try to wrap this up by the end of August so that, that and they might just have me come in once a month to supervise the Oak Street numbers into their QuickBooks. But that's all memorized transactions. Those are memorized journal entries, so that's part of the policies and procedures. Nice. It ought to be interesting to see how well it will work out. I think it'll work out really well. And yeah. now, maybe I'll try to write, maybe I should try to write up a summary and a review of it, kind of like a white paper, so that um, other people could do it or other people could hire me as a consultant to do it. Right, right. Or there are people that can follow you. That's what I like to do, have policies and procedures. Yeah. If I have to step out, someone else can step in and do it, follow right. those procedures. Yeah. But that's I noticed on, I believe it was between Wall and Maine, but it might have been on one of the other Facebook uh, pages having to do with accounting. Someone was asking about, they were... Oh, they had a client that had a lot of years 
of of QuickBooks, but it was in like QuickBooks 2011, I think. Oh and they wanted to bring it. They wanted to bring it over into something else. Uh, oh, QuickBooks Online. It was desktop, and uh, I didn't write. But my understanding is, whenever you have data that's become corrupt, it's lost its integrity. You really need to restore it in the version it's in. Yes. Uh, and that means you need to rebuild it in that version. And you can actually rebuild it as many as 10 or 20 times. I've done that before you actually restore the integrity on something. You just kind of have to be extremely patient with it. The other thing you can do, which I didn't have time to write up. I noticed it last night when I was going to bed, you know, looking on my phone. And it, you can actually make a copy of the file. Just make a copy of the file. I do that frequently when yeah. I am and then you can, I use Transaction Pro Deleter. That's what I used with this Quicken project. I brought I brought 44 years of Quicken data over. Wow. A lot of years. That wow. Took a while to do that, but it was just being patient. And then I took Transact and I brought it into, I think it was Quicken. 2012 and I think I brought it into QuickBooks 2012. Okay. And then after I, because you can do that, you can say I'm importing it from Quicken. Right. Now, now I have to ask you, Linda, is there really value to bringing in 44 years worth of data? Not particularly. And if I had had the Quicken on my, on my computer, I might have taken Quicken's very good at chopping but the other thing that's odd though is when you with quick and let's say you have 44 years of data okay and let's say the main checking accounts have been reconciled but there are other accounts in there that were never reconciled when you chop when you say i only want from january 1st uh, 2010 to december 31st of 2014 when you chop that if there's anything before January 1st, 2010, that's not reconciled, it won't chop it off. It only chops off things that are reconciled. Okay, okay. So the easy, I found for me, and you do this after you do it three or four times, and you're going like, oh, they didn't reconcile. <laughs> right, right. So, um, so I just bring it all in, and then, then I use Transaction Pro Deleter to delete what I don't want. And if I need, because it's easier for me to work in QuickBooks desktop than in Quicken. Right. I, I just go in and I reconcile things. And I do a fell swoop reconciliation. Right. And then when I'm all done, I compare it to bank statements for the beginning of that year or something. I just kind of go for the quick and dirty, the easiest way. And it gets me in every transaction, too. And every transaction is either reconciled or then I do reconcile. It. Right. And right. they had already done tax returns. They'd already gone with the Yeah, numbers. if they've already done tax returns and stuff, for me, what I do is archive that database yes. to a trial balance as yes. of the previous and the, the end of the year of the yes. previous year and just bring it in as a big journal entry. Okay. What you don't get when you do that method is um, year over year, like you use your, your um, prior year comparisons. Yeah. What you can do is use Sarah Laidlaw's tool, uh, Trial Balance Importer. Got it. And you can bring in 12 months worth of the prior year, then you get the comparative report for the prior year. That, you know, either way depends on the client and what they want. Most clients say, oh, yeah, I want all the data. But I have to ask them, is it really worth the time that it takes to put 44 years worth of data into Well, the I just chopped it off once I got it into QuickBooks. Okay. And it was, it was actually relatively easy to do. Okay. It, it might have, maybe it took an extra hour to do the import. Right. But I did it on one computer. I did the import there. I was able to work on another computer while it was importing. I did all this at my house. Uh, the, the one problem that I ran into with this particular job, and I think it's one we all run into a lot, is over those 44 years, there were an awful lot of transactions that had, that had been left in that had never reconciled. 
We're talking, so they were like duplicate deposits. They didn't reconcile because they were duplicates. And, and that, nobody, I, don't, I don't get this. They look at it. They know it's not right, but they never like. They don't know what to do with what's it. Going on. They do not know what to do with it, so they do nothing. Yeah, and so now that was a weird thing because those kind of things drive me crazy. <laughs> so I went and I looked to see if I could find the duplicate in that. And, and, and since I knew he was actually really properly reconciled, I'd seen the bank statements, I knew what was reconciled was reconciled. I knew anything not reconciled did not happen. Um, I think I just deleted it all, one by one. I, I, and, and that's wrong because that the throws my numbers. The financials, up. right? But, For years. you know. Um, and that's something that I think we as, as professionals need to always be aware that chances are that's happening. And that's a good, that's a good place to start too, yep. because then what you do is you're offsetting things, whatever you, you're going to delete, you need to offset it the following year, I guess. But then it still doesn't matter. Well, yeah, I guess it would, you'd have to offset it in this year, whatever right. this year is. I yeah. tend to use a clearing account for that. I'll create a bank account. Oh, that's a good it, idea. Um, and just throw everything there and yes. then clean that out at the end. Yeah, you can, okay. then you can do a journal entry at the end in the right. issue. Right. right. Oh, that's a great idea. Yeah. yeah. So, and that's how I bring the Oak Street numbers in is with a clearing account. And, and for okay. old bills that are entered or old invoices that have been paid, I use that clearing account also. Yes, that's a good thing to do. Now, they don't have any old invoices. They're invoices. They're, a they're, they're, they're accounts payable, and accounts receivable. We're all good. in Oak Street. Now, so many times I see accounts receivable that are, you know, hundreds yeah. of thousands of dollars off. Right. That's one of the things that I always kind of check with a couple of my regular clients. Right. I run the open uh, invoice report and look at that and in aging fashion in that. And I've gotten them pretty good about if, 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 tra if invoices are more than 90 to 100 days old, that we really need to write them off at the end of the quarter or at the end of a month or something. Mm -hmm. Um, if we need to, uh, we can we can write it off, and then if we need to bring it back, we can, unless right. it's the last fiscal year. Again, I use I use the clearing account because of the dates. Got I it. To control the dates Perfect. better that way. When you write it off, sometimes it does. Oh, it off. goes back to the date it. Well, you're right. Rather oh. than writing it off the date you're writing it off. Yep. Yes. Yep. Yep. Exactly. So right. I will use a clearing right. account. I will pay the bills and send it to the clearing account. I will pay the uh, the invoices, put it to right. the clearing account, and then do a journal entry to clear it out. Yes, that's a good way to do it. And then just memo it. If right. You memo right. It right. Clearly. And when I do the journal entry, bills left from 2010. Yep. And then you've done it in 2016 or whatever, you know. But again, I don't see any reason to go back more than like three years. What we have, we have from basically January 1st, 2013 to now. So we've got all 13, all of 14, all of 15, and whatever we have in 16. Right. Good, good, good. Three years, that's all you need. You don't need more than that. They're coming along then, and now they're ready to retire. Now that their books are clean and good, they're ready to retire. Right, and and maybe I can train whoever I, we're tr we're trying to do. I'm trying to write it up in the policies and procedures, but the people working in Oak Street know how to do that. But I can help them write that up into policies and procedures if they're right. leaving and they need to train a. Train Absolutely. A Absolutely. So. Well, I'm going to switch gears a little bit. We'll come back to your getting more clients, Linda, in a little bit. I want to talk fine. some about Sage because I'm really excited about Sage. Yeah. Um, Larry wanted to hear how I'm doing in the Sage universe. Um, so I have purchased the 25 pack bundle. 
Right. Um, and I have two businesses on it right now. Perfect. Oh. Um, one is my own small business, and one is a close friend that I'm having her try it out. And, and I'm having she's, – she's pretty good with accounting, although she's not an accountant. I'm having her do it on her own and coming back to me with feedback because I want to hear from a user's standpoint how they feel about it and where their struggles are so that I know as an advisor where to concentrate and where to look. QuickBooks, I know all of that. Sage is a new experience for me. So, so I'm trying to go at it at two different angles. One as the user and the user experience one is the accountant helping the user. Yeah. Do you know which version are you using? Um, Sage One. Okay, got it. Uh, so that's the online version? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. And don't be confused when you say online because, Tar, you want to explain the other onlines? Well, so there's uh, two onlines. <laughs> well, Sage One was written uh, exclusively for the cloud. So if, if I had to draw a comparison, I'd say, okay, QuickBooks Online, um, you know, for the cloud. It does not have some of the uh, feature functionality that the desktop version has, which is also true with, uh, with QuickBooks. Like a, lot of, a lot of people I know are QuickBooks Pro Advisors, and they say, I still like the desktop version. I'm giving up something, you know, as they try to push me, you know, into the cloud or the internet version. Sage One was written uh, uh, much like Zero, 100% in the cloud. So, there, and it's completely hardware uh, agnostic. Um, some of the difference in the functionality between it and the desktop version, for example, is Sage One does not have an integrated payroll solution yet. They, uh, they expect to announce that in October. Another little uh, glitch, which constantly annoys me, and it's finally getting fixed this uh, Jan or July, is uh, Sage One will now have uh, integrated uh, check writing and more API connectors so that we can, you know, we could look at HubDoc, for example, or, you know, some of the other connections on it. It's, uh, it, it's interesting to, to see the evolution on Sage One because at the end of the day, it's still today, until I get word otherwise, they're offering a pack of 25 licenses for the accounting professional that are good for a year for $25. That's it. And all, I that everyone all my, do that. Or, you know, <laughs> it's, it's like, what's well, a no-brainer? Yeah. I, I, yeah. I, I, uh, uh, Wednesday and Thursday, by the way, this week, I was in Los Angeles um, at, the, uh, at the LA uh, Hilton, and that's where the uh, conference was for the California uh, CPA Society's Conference for Accountants and uh, Business Innovation. And uh, interesting enough, Sage... Sage View, which again is another entirely cloud-based solution, um, as well as Sage Impact, which is free for any anybody, any accounting uh, person. You don't have to be a member of uh, Sage Network. Um, both won uh, two of the uh, innovation awards. Yeah, so, nice, nice. So I thought, and that's the second year in a row for Sage View. Uh, we had a lot of fun with it at the show. It, it generated a lot of buzz, as you can imagine. Our our a humble uh, twenty by twenty booth was dwarfed by the 600 pound gorilla, you know, with into it about 10 feet away. So uh, <laughs> yeah, at, at some, at some points during the program when they were doing a special uh, thing on the firm of the future, for example, or, or what have you, now uh, we, we looked over like those poor little orphan kids standing outside of a deli delicatessen, looking at all those people eating that yummy stuff. <laughs> and we didn't, we didn't have anything to eat. So, uh, <laughs> It was, it, was, it was quite a show, but I'll tell you, um, I had uh, a few of the QuickBooks Pro Advisors come over, take a quick peek at Sage One and said, you know what, I've got some clients that this is going to be perfect, uh, if nothing else, just for the bank feeds. And I'll pay a dollar to get the bank feeds, so at the end of the year, I don't have to do anything but, but right. basically Absolutely. You know, check, you know, check off, okay, yes, that was a personal expense, no, that was, you know, that was a gift. Um, you know, yes, that was an office expense. No, that was right. a personal expense. Um, so that, you know, that gave a lot of feedback. We were, we were processing credit cards on the floor because people couldn't believe it. So what's the catch? $25 for 25 licenses? 
and how long is it good for? And we said a year. And by the way, the clients as well as the, uh, you know, the professionals um, can both um, sign up on any of the SAGE uh, webinars that go on almost daily for education. They can also schedule one-on-ones. So it's, it's an enormous investment by SAGE at a very solopreneur LLC oriented market, a very service oriented market. There's no inventory, there's no purchasing. But if you want to do job costing, department tracking, um, you know, project management, it does all of that. And shortly we'll have finished the uh, check writing and the API integration uh, to be a little bit uh, more connected to third party apps. So nice. for, I encourage anybody who wants to give it a go, do it before they change their mind because they were supposed to have changed in May. That's so, what I thought, yeah. But, but they have not done it yet. So like, like Gina, kudos to you. Thank he said, you. Yeah, I'll have one, please, sir. <laughs> so, yes, indeed. <laughs> I'll have 25, thank you. <laughs> thank you, I have 25. Oh, and by the way, if nine months from today, if you, if you signed up on June 1st and your license is good till May 31st, for example, um, if a client doesn't uh, sign up until February of next year, that license is good for 365 days for that client. Oh. It's just that your 25 will expire so that you can't use that code, but that code can be used at any time within the year. And then from the client point of view, it's good for a year. So it's like, you know, you, you could, you could, you, you really got a lot of flexibility on how you want to time and introduce it to, uh, to clients or not introduce it to a client and just get the bank fees. Right, right, right. It is so worth it just for the bank fees. And and I want to say I am really, really liking Sage Impact. I like being able to pull all of the products together. The thing that I didn't like was doing my profile five times. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, the other thing is Impact is getting a total facelift. And the other thing that's coming out of it uh, is – oops, sorry, let me mute that. Oh my goodness, the office is calling, I'll ignore them. It's Friday afternoon, Nobody, nobody's supposed to be working. I apologize. But um, um, Sage Impact is getting a facelift. For example, that annoying little banner that goes across the bottom of your screen, that yes. goes away. You'll have, you'll have a full screen with links to it, um, more connectivity. And again, it's, it's totally free. Anybody can have it. Yeah, well, I have so far Sage One, Sage View, they threw Sage 300 on there for me. That came by default. Huh. There, there is a Sage e-file cabinet, which I'm interested in looking at. But uh, it's going to take a while for me because I have my own file system that I'm currently using um, with Dropbox. And, and file systems, once you're committed to it, you're committed to it. It, yeah, if it works, you know, it's, it's the same thing I tell you know, professional accounts all day long. I say, look, if, if it works, why would you want to change it? <laughs> don't right. mess with it. If it's, it's not broke, don't market, fix it. Don't fix it. Right. <laughs> then Sage Match, which I compared to the QuickBooks Pro Advisor. Um, and then Sage, what's the other one? Sage uh, Value. value. And, and I'm really looking forward to getting into that. I have everything with QuickBooks. I have my packages all set up and everything, but I'm right. looking forward to working with Sage Value and the Sage One product and putting together a package for the solopreneurs. Good, yeah. Yeah, the, and I'm anxious to get feedback on your experience for it. I've only set up a few of the value uh, uh, packages, if you will, for clients. They, they tend to you know, gravitate toward very easily. And then they just tweak it a little bit. You know, does it include 941s? Does it include, you know, an hour callback or a next day callback or email callback, for example? They'll just, they'll, they'll fine tune what you're getting for your, uh, you know, your, you know, your tin, silver, gold, bronze, platinum, you know, type, type. Right. Uh, right. How we, how we. And that's also free, by the way. Sage Value and Sage Match are also free. Anybody can do it. So, so I'm looking forward to that. I also have, um, I set up Sage City and Sage University, which I like both of them too. And I've already looked at some of the training. I did mm -hmm. the bank feeds training. I was able to do in Sage One 
Um, they they um, just gave me the licenses. I set up my company. I was able to connect the banks. Yeah. Um, and I was able to do a couple transactions in there myself with no training whatsoever. And then I took a general training, which was like an overview of Sage One, got some more answers. And I really, you know, I do want to do a one-on-one -on -one training that does come yeah. free. Uh, yeah. and, and I'm looking forward to it. So I do have specific questions. Um, but I'm really, really liking what I see. I'm liking how easy it is. Um, and, and I'm looking forward to doing more with it. Cool. Thank you. I, I think there's a place for it. You know, there's no one, one product that's going to continually, you know, fit every, you know, every circumstance or every type of client. To be honest with you, um, 80, I'd say a good 80% or more of the you know, county professionals' uh, clients are not even really generating invoices or quotes or recording bills. They're not doing any bookkeeping whatsoever. Um, the accountant is, is and the bookkeeper and the enrolled agent or financial planner really wants to grab those bank fees so they free up time to do something else, regardless of what it is. I don't care if it's zero or if it's you know QuickBooks or, or Excel for that matter. So and and speaking of which, there is a business, Sage Business Intelligence. I'll wait for the announcement at Summit in July, but they're they're going to be rolling out a connection for the Sage Business Intelligence to take the reporting to the next level within uh, Sage One. So it's nice. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting until Sage One becomes Sage Forty Nine and sits right next to Sage Fifty. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> so I have another question for you. What is Sage Live? I just heard about that this morning. Oh my gosh! Okay, it's uh, well, since we're recording, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll be nice. <laughs> Sage Sage Live was a result is the result, and in, in it's evolving of a joint venture collaboration between Sage and Salesforce. So oh. Sage Live is built entirely on the Salesforce platform. Okay. So so if, if you had a client who's running Salesforce CRM or what have you, and they wanted to have a full, robust, work from anywhere, mobile tablet, you know, collaborative, you know, very much look and feel like Salesforce CRM, but a complete accounting system, Sage Live would probably resonate. If you foisted it off on a small business, a solopreneur, entrepreneur, they'd probably be overwhelmed with the sheer depth and breadth of the functionality. Plus, now you've introduced... Um, a Sage product, which by the way, they rolled it out in less than 90 days. It was phenomenal. Um, wow. you know, it connects to this to the Salesforce uh, app store. So there's just all sorts of, there's way too many things to pick. Just way too many things doing similar to the same thing. It's, you know, for me, it's, it's confusing. I, I, tend, I tend to go with what works and uh, you know, give positive input on what could make it work better. You know? But uh, well, so I look forward to all these things being pulled together, to be honest with you. Because like I said, I was very excited on the Sage Impact. And, I, and when I go into a product, I put my profile up, I set my profile up, and I'm ready to go. I set my profile up three times, uh, three, times. <laughs> three times, and on the fourth time, I just put an, um, a username and an email and said, that's it. I can't do it anymore. Oh my gosh. Uh, and I, I know you work with Yuri. Uh, Yuri, by the way, for any, any, anybody uh, out there who's been using Sage 50, he came over from the Sage 50 uh, team where he'd been for almost 14 years. So anyone who's used to Peachtree, um, Yuri really understands how to connect the dots. And uh, a really, really nice, a nice young fellow, very, very uh, knowledgeable and very eager to help. Uh, he thinks he thinks you're his, you know, second second aunt now here in the. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I love him back. I think he is like one of the most patient people around. Um, he is great as he holding your hand, telling you what to do, staying with you until it's done, and just acting mm -hmm. like you are the only one that he needs to worry about at that moment. Yeah, he's very good that way. I, I like Yuri a lot. I'm, I'm lucky to have him on uh, on my team as my my inside counterpart from the Atlanta uh, Customer Business Center. Of course, I'm out here in uh, Temecula, California, but, you know, 
we're, we're jabbering as we speak back and forth. Oh, good, 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 good. So I'm looking forward to next week and doing our Sage View demo. Okay, we'll do, we'll do a, nice, a nice overview and take it from there. Um, Sage View, uh, just for those of you who might be interested in it, again, it works uh, almost flawlessly with QuickBooks Desktop as well as QuickBooks Online. And I think that's part of the reason for the Innovation Award is because it is application agnostic. Yes, that's and, wonderful. Yeah, that, my, my best customers on Sage View are not Sage clients formally. They are QuickBooks Pro Advisors saying, this gives me an edge. It differentiates my tube of toothpaste when I'm meeting with a client who can actually understand what key performance indicators and ratios um, are useful for it. And that, that dovetails nicely with that Sage value, the free software. You can say, well, we're going to be providing that as part of our package, our gold package. For example, meaningful reports measured daily, weekly, monthly, rolling 365, quarterly, however you want to slice and dice it. Um, you got it. It sets up very quickly. I mean, minutes. Absolutely. Nice. Anybody else have any questions about Sage, Larry? Thank you. I have one. Uh, I used to use Sage Act. Now, you, they sold that like a year or two ago, didn't they? I'm sorry, Sage? Act. AC oh, Act. Yeah, there were, there were still people lingering around from the Act team. Um, yes, that was, that was sold. Um, and the older I'm familiar with, CRM software, the uh, sales logics, was also sold to uh, Infor. Infor Corporation bought that to fit the low end, lower end market alongside the uh, salesforce.com. You know, salesforce right. So, yeah, and why, I don't know, because just when I got used to using sales logics in my former, uh, former role, well, out <laughs> now I have to learn, now I have to learn something entirely new. That's all right. right. Salesforce.com is quite overwhelming between, between I'm it. I'm still using the app, and I'm trying to force myself to go over and use Outlook. Yeah, yeah, it's it's hard to change. You're, you're really going back some time though. <laughs> self destruct, which they may do with this Windows 10. Oh, I'll tell you, they've got everybody in the business world really upset with Windows 10. Yeah, the media is now coming after. People can't stop it. Well, yeah. poor Joanne Del Bizo, she had to actually the only way she got Windows 10 off of her computer was to refuse to accept the agreement. And then it took her like, I think an hour for it to back off of her computer. Joanne, are you with us? Can you talk to about this? Yeah, what's up? The, remember when the Windows, Windows 10? 10? Yeah, so I had to, and actually I'm going through this same hack all over again at home on my husband's computer. Yeah. But it was one of those where I came in in the morning and it was installed. Like I didn't even ask for it to happen. So I had to. Like, welcome. <laughs> welcome to Windows you 10. Like, it's computer. the middle of tax <laughs> season. This can't happen. <laughs> so I spent um, probably a good 90 minutes with a lovely chap <laughs> from Microsoft. We were like best buds. And he finally, he had to remote on and he finally got it disconnected. But what happened on Janine's computer is it came up and we had to actually cancel. You have to cancel the request and then say something like, I don't want to see this again. And then it will finally leave you alone. I thought they changed it. So if you hit, it, hit escape or hit X, they would start installing it. Yeah, it does. It, I'm telling you, my husband's like, I don't know what to do. I think this thing's installing. I'm like, well, you better figure it out or let me know if I need to come upstairs and, and rescue you. And he never came back down. So I don't know if he's I like your solution of saying I refuse to accept this agreement. I do not. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So so when they, when they give you, so that was the whole thing. You're right. I totally forgot. So when they come through the whole, you have to accept their terms of a service. And for in order for it to install, no. so if you disagree and say no, then they, it will uninstall it and go back to the regular. Yeah. So that's how you get out of it. You have to let it go, and then you 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 say I refuse to accept <laughs> service, and then they will put you back to the normal one. 
I downloaded on one of my computers and it didn't work the first time. And so I made some updates and it worked. And then on my second Windows computer, I downloaded it. And what happened was some of the websites would, the web, internet websites wouldn't connect. And so you go into settings and you can actually go back to Windows 7. Hmm. I've done that. I know that they're going to make you know, pay for it after July 29th. So I'm thinking that maybe I didn't have enough drivers. And so I'd kind of like get it to work, but I'm kind of reluctant to do it much before mid-July. Yeah, I don't know. It is, <clears throat> it is the stepchild I didn't want because I can't stand it. <sighs> And I bought a computer with I bought a computer with Windows Windows ten. Windows ten. That one I used the Zoom that we could never it didn't look right. Oh. And I zoomed with you, Joanne. <laughs> I can't there is nothing on the computer. It doesn't have Adobe. It doesn't have um Microsoft Office. It, it is just it doesn't, it doesn't come with anything. It doesn't install Movie Maker on it. No, 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 no. I mean like my computer is brand new. It's a little right. laptop. And it is slow as molasses. And I'm like, what the hell? And I had this somebody named Katrina or Katrina something. I said, hell no, I don't want you on my computer. And I closed that out. But I'm like, I can't even, I can't even have a good Zoom. The video quality sucks. Like, I was like, oh. hey, I have some, um, I have some really good news. Oh, good. Share. I got, well, the bad news was I had to spend two hours on hold with the IRS to talk to somebody. But when I got on the phone with them, I, t I found was following up on a letter I sent to try to get a client out of a penalty and I got a $5,300 penalty abated. Nice. Right. Congratulations. What was, your, what was your reasoning? What was your argument? Um, they effed up. They're bad. Uh, no, it was a situation where it was a short year S-Corp return Okay. And the the situation was there was three partners and one partner was buying out the other two, yeah. but they never told me. So I just assumed it was going to be a single person return, you know, mid-year change percentages, whatever, blah, blah, blah. I can do that with my eyes closed. So he didn't give me the stuff right away after the, after the tax year. So we put up an extension. And when the new guy, the, the new guy that was taking over brought me all the stuff, I found out he closed the bank account last April and um, he just, the company was done. He is doing the company. He took the customer list and he's doing it in a different business. Wow. So, was it like so I filed a short year and, and the short year to return was filed late. So because of the three people, they wanted basically $5,300 in, in um, kind of filing late. Yeah, failure to file. So yeah. I drafted a letter that just basically explained to them the situation. I told them who I was and I said, explained to them, you know, the, the taxpayer was unaware that he was, you know, basically played stupid. <laughs> and as soon as I found out, I filed the return and I just said this would cause an undue financial burden on the client and they have, they have an impeccable, impeccable record record and they've never filed anything late. And the lady was very nice on the phone because he freaked out because he got a second notice that said, we're going to put a hey, good morning and everything. Oh, yeah. And I told him, I said, well, your <laughs> business account is closed so they can't seize anything because the business is gone. <laughs> How are they going to do that? <laughs> so the lady was really nice and she looked it up and she goes, yep. She goes, actually, they abated it in full on June 1st. He should get something in the mail in the next, uh, like in the next week. But she said it was, they, they usually, she told me, she goes, just to let you know, we usually do something, especially if it's the first time they've ever asked for an abatement. Yeah. And because it was a final return, they just let it go. I think so. he should take you out to dinner, Joanne. Well, actually, he's not a client of mine because the, the guy... He is using another tax person. The people that owned the company were my client. Uh, and I was just doing him a favor by filing the two favor, and I think he should take you out to dinner, client. Oh, well. I'm just glad that I don't have to listen to this guy call me, keep on asking me to get out the stupid $5,500, $5,300 penalty. Right. Or you don't have to take a hit on your um, liability insurance. Oh, I wasn't going to on this one. I wasn't going to because it really wasn't my fault. Mm. I didn't find out until the last minute it was his fault. I, I would not submit that to errors and omissions because, right. you know, I did not know about it. I really thought it was going to be a single person return. Uh, yeah. Number. So that was, that was really good news for me to start off the weekend. 
Oh, no. Clients will always tell you everything they need to. What's that? Well, they clients don't. Well, that's the thing is that the guy was like, oh, I didn't know I was supposed to tell anybody. And I'm like, well, how about at least, like, didn't your other accountant know? Like, he has an accountant, right? He has an accountant that's doing this other business's return. You don't mean to tell me that she could have informed him that if you're closing that account, you got to make sure you tell her. <laughs> <laughs> Give me a 411 so that I know. Yeah. Throw me a red flag, something. Anything. Anything. I don't know. Anyways, yeah. that was my wonderful news. I'm so. Oh, and so here's the other thing. So I know we only got a few minutes left, but <laughs> desktop people. Yes. I, which is basically Linda, right? <laughs> Me? I'm desktop too. Okay. Well, I have a, and this might have to be a side conversation to see if there's any way we can fix this. And I think I might have talked, you guys might have heard me talk about this file last year. I have a, ret I have a file that, that has a balance sheet that does not balance. Oh, and yeah. I have tried running data fixes and blah, blah, all the utility stuff, and it's still... Are they using multi-currency? No. Okay. Did you find out what month the problem is in? It goes back to like 2012, and I still can't figure out how to fix it. It's... Do you know where the error is? Can you find the error? So I have you, an idea of where the error is. I can't remember it now. But if you yeah, it has a balance sheet by year, go back to when it's balanced, then start doing it per month. You'll be right. able to get take it back to actually the week and possibly the day. Yeah. So then you can find out what transaction is causing the problem. Yeah. Delete it and re-enter it. See, but here, well, oh, delete it and re-enter it, because here's the thing is, I don't, I think I remember doing this last year, and I don't remember anything, I don't remember anything looking wrong with that transaction, but maybe I never deleted it and re-entered it. it. Yeah, and it, there doesn't have to be anything that looks wrong with it. Okay. Okay, that's the, that's the thing, but, but if that's where it goes wrong, you can't see what's invisibly underneath. Yeah. Because, the, like, like I said, this this the, doesn't have any inventory or anything. It doesn't, it doesn't matter. Sometimes it's, it's the weirdest thing. Is the it? The other thing, Joanne, that I usually do, personally, if I'm going to delete something and re-enter it, yeah. I re-enter it first. And then in the memo field, I say, keep this. And the other one, the one I'm going to delete, I write delete in the memo fields. And then after I get the right one in, I delete the other one. And then I look again to see if it fixed it. Okay. The other thing is you might go out of QuickBooks and come back into QuickBooks in between the two. Mm. And That's sometimes true. it's a list corruption. I have had, that. Yeah, I have had an employee list go wrong <coughs> and, and my payroll refuse to work because yeah. of that huh yeah that's that that is really bad news because you the only thing you can do is create a new employee and that messes up things like unemployment that oh ah, yeah i know you, know, you, you have limits the first whatever thousand are taxable and after right. that, yeah and and medicare too yeah so i think i'm finding it uh oh good <laughs> <laughs> Larry, I think we missed, did you have questions about Sage? Were you about to come on and ask some questions? I, uh, I'm looking very, very much forward to the next, the next one with the demo. Yeah. Is that next week? Next yeah. week, yes. Yeah. June uh, 6th, I think. No? Fingers crossed. I'm crossing <laughs> my fingers only because I'm hoping Wade, who's the, uh, the product engineer in Atlanta, doesn't, you know, doesn't, freak out and his hair go, you know, go crazy on him um, from uh, trying to figure out how Zoom works and sharing his desktop. It's going to be a new, a new experience for Wade. It's really simple. It's not a yeah. hard thing. I'm just going to say, Wade, all you got to do is share your screen. Zoom is but, so simple. Well, that's why we start a half hour early for the people yes. that are doing demos so that we can try this out and get all the technical difficulties taken care of. And I that's, that's a good point. Yeah, I, I, I had forgotten that. I'm glad you uh, reminded me yeah. so I can update Wade and let him know he needs to try a half hour early. Having said that, uh, I must have done 100 demos of SageView myself at the California CPA conference. So 
you know, if you have to, you'll be stuck with me, but I would prefer you to have the benefit of, of the, uh, the, the best we, the best guru we got. So. Awesome. Awesome. I did turn Yuri on to zoom. He's using it now and he says he loves it. Good deal. And we used to use Hangouts, and Hangouts was harder. Uh, yeah, I, I, I agree. <laughs> yeah, they never fix their technical problems. So. Well, we are almost out of time. Is there any subjects anyone wants to talk about before we... Don't you guys want to know what date this happened? Yeah, what date? Sometime in 2012. It's like the first, it's the first day. It's January 1st of 2010. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Have you narrowed down the transaction or at least the account that it's in? No, I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> Payroll can't carry over from the prior year, there's right? No, uh, there's no payroll in this one. I'm telling you, there's like nothing to this file. Nothing. It's just something that's invisible inside of there that you have no clue what it is. So. I want to ask Tom uh, about the certification. Somebody whispering to me? Jan is whispering. Can you speak up? <laughs> I can't hear you. What did you say? <laughs> Yeah, it, your voice sounds extremely soft. <laughs> Try again, Jan. Okay, so I wanted to ask Tar. We're breaking up. Can you type it in chat? I think something might be wrong with your audio on your computer. Maybe heard some music too. I think music is coming from Misha. Yeah, sorry. My oh. baby girl is in the is on the other side of the room watching a movie. Got it. So it's a movie. All right. Okay. So in chat, I think Jan has her, and and can you tell me about the Sage certification? How much does it cost? All right. Oh, let me just turn that one off. Sorry, that's a reminder for my uh, my wife. But anyway, uh, Sage certification. Uh, excellent question. I was asked that and it was like stump the chump on the floor yesterday at the uh, LA conference because I couldn't answer uh, under what conditions you might have to pay a certification fee and under what conditions it's included. And I know, for example, there's some really wonky things that were going on in the last month whereas if you signed up, for example, for Sage One and you activated um, or provided the names of 10 target clients, um, not all of whom have to go live, obviously, you know, at any one time, that you would get one-on-one uh, -on -one time scheduled, plus you would get SAGE certification, the value was X. And I apologize. I, I will find that out. Right. Because apart, from, apart from that, and that promo is still valid as far as I know. They're um, offering me the SAGE certification. They told me I could do the SAGE certification at no charge. Perfect. Okay. Thank I, I you. Purchased the twenty-five pack. I have two businesses on it right now. Um, Perfect. But they offered it to me even before I had any of the businesses on it. Oh, that's great. I, it's it's a fairly simple uh, course routine. I all of us in the field had to go through it and be certified before we were allowed out on the uh, unsuspecting public. So, <laughs> you know, we. I, I, I did complete it. It was fairly straightforward. You know, you get hung up a little bit in uh, nuance, but uh, Sage One is so simple to drive. Uh, you know, it's, it's second nature. And I've been doing the uh, Sage University for free also. Absolutely. That's, that's where I took the courses on the banking, um, mm -hmm. learning how to attach the bank accounts, learning how to do the reconciliations. And, yeah. and by the way, I love that Sage One has real bank reconciliations, not oh. the matchy thing that, that Zero has. Zero's reconciliations are not true reconciliations. They are not reconciliations unless you have a beginning and ending balance and come out to zero. Just matching yes. things does not work in my opinion. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a real good point. And closing, closing on that point, so many people will rush into it like, you know, like your, your daughter running down the trail of the mountain and you just know that you know, she's going to get off the trail and you know, hit her head on a rock. I say, please, when you start you know, with the bank records, start with an opening balance. Do um, that month, close that month. Make sure that your ending balance is the same on Sage as it is on, on the bank record. 
yes. and then import the next month. Don't just throw everything in there, or you'll end up creating an adjustment account on the, on the chart of accounts yes. and just doing an offset. And, and that does bring me to another point that I really <laughs> like about Sage One is once the transactions are reconciled, you cannot change them. You can change the account that it's coded to, but you cannot delete a check. You cannot delete a check that's been priorly uh, reconciled. Yes. Yeah, Sage One does not allow you to delete transactions just because you didn't like them anymore. Um, but yes, it came up yesterday where there was one um, um, uncategorized income. We drilled into it from the, uh, it was a live account from the uh, profit and loss. And on the profit and loss, it said this was an overdraft from the bank. I said, well, that's not uncategorized income. I know in the sole proprietor that they don't make this up on their own funds. So it's owner's contribution and we recorded it. We were able to change it, even though it went back into November of 2015. So, and that took care of that nasty little extra line item on the uh, on the P and L that we didn't like seeing. That uncategorized expense, I hate. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, we don't have uncategorized transactions in any of my books. <laughs> There's suspense until we figure them out. <laughs> yeah, and that's, and that's the way it should be. They shouldn't move off the dashboard into the journal until you, you come up with a legitimate account. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> or make one up. <laughs> <laughs> Even that's better than un, unclassified or un. Yeah, I have an account called Huh or Duh, D U H, I don't know. <laughs> it's on the chart of accounts in the 9000 series. <laughs> yep, yep. Yep, exactly, exactly. Thank you. Thank you for uh, you know, letting me share a little bit today, too. <laughs> That's awesome. Any other questions, Larry? No? Anything anyone else would like to bring up before we go? Jana, oh. we'll answer that second question on the uh, summit discount. Um, I will find that out by Monday since it's already 6.30 in Atlanta, but I, I will be able to find that out. So if you will email me a pinky, I'm going to make a note to myself and I'll get the answer for you. And thanks so much. Oh, have a great weekend. Thank you. Thank you. Great, great. All righty. Well, I guess that's about it for this week. Oh, I'm sorry. Sarah, I wanted to talk to you. We will be bringing Noify in. Yes. Yeah. Yes, we'll be demoing Noify. They are in July um, the 15th. Yep. <laughs> so looking forward to that. I'm excited. I, I'm glad that he responded. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. Yeah. So. Looking forward to it. Good. All righty, everybody. I guess that's it. We'll okay. Next week. We'll see Sage yep. View demoed next week. Yay. Looking forward to it. <laughs> See you all then. Oh, yeah. All right. Have a good one. Bye bye. Bye. -bye. bye.